today I'm going to be talking about columnaris and freshwater fish. I chose this topic because I love to fish. I'm an avid fisher, um, so I thought it would be interesting to learn more about some of the ailments um, afflicting wild fish populations. So I'll be going over um, the affected populations, symptoms, causes, and treatments. Columnaris is also known as cottonmouth um, in fish. And it's basically a bacterial infection. Um, it's strictly aerobic, so it thrives on oxygen, and it causes ulcers, frayed fins, damaged gills, and patches um, on the epidermis of the fish. And like I said, it only affects freshwater fish. Um, it's most common in, well, both wild and like cultured fish, so it can be found in fish farms. Um, it's most prevalent in both large and smallmouth bass, and I'm not sure um, through my research whether that's because more bass have been caught with this um, bacterial infection, so there's more reported cases in bass, or if it just affects bass more than the other fish. But it has been found in channel cats, perch, um, carp, salmon, tilapia, and trout. This infection is spread uh, by contact, so if one fish has it, if it brushes up in a, against another fish, that fish is more likely um, to get it. It cannot pass to humans this way. So if you do catch a fish with this infection, and you touch it, it's not going to pass to you. You won't be harmed. Um, is the fish still edible when it, if it has it? That was my next point. Oh, okay. uh, I couldn't find much through research um, through this. I think if someone were to catch a fish, <coughs> you'll see the pictures, it's pretty gnarly, it's uh, gross. So I think if somebody had caught a fish with columnaris, they'd either throw it back in the water, um, they wouldn't eat it, or they would effectively destroy it um, and not, you know, let and it help keep happen. the spread down. Like right. That. So some of the symptoms include pale patches, lesions, or sores on the skin. Um, a yellow slime often appears right around the skin, gills, or the fins of the fish. Um, it gets its name cottonmouth from the fluffy white growths that um, typically grow around the mouth of the fish. As said before, this bacteria is strictly aerobic, so it's going to thrive on areas um, with high, concentra high concentrations of oxygen. So the gills, the mouth, um, any open orifice like the eyes, the nose, um, that's why the cotton mouth exists. Um, it causes frayed or torn fins, epidermal loss, necrosis, um, saddleback is just a term on either side of the dorsal fin um, The is typically where these pale patches can be found, so it looks like just a saddle color on the fish. And in the most severe cases, it can cause death. So this is a good example of that cotton-like cotton growth on the fish. It's characterized by this red sort of outline along the outside of the circle. You can see that the bacteria is starting to spread through the soft dorsal fin of the fish. This is a different wild caught bass um, with different symptoms, but with the same bacterial infection. Um, it has these red lesions um, between the soft dorsal and anal fin. And then another bass, this one's a more severe case. Um, this lesion is right by the gills, so right by that oxygen source. Again, the characteristic red outline um, of that lesion. And then right on the gills, you can see that sort of like pale yellow cream colored slime that's growing um, all over the gills and right by, by the eye as well. And then there's another lesion starting to form right here. So um, columnaris is endemic within the population. So it's always found in the water and it just becomes um, outbreaks start when there's higher levels of stress within the fish population. And this stress can be brought about by temperature changes. So um, especially during the spring, when the warmer weather brings warmer water temperatures, um, this bacteria thrives in that warm water. So um, it will enter through the gills, mouth, small wounds, any orifice on the fish, um, and start eating away at the um, flesh. Overcrowding is another large stress factor. So you can find overcrowding in fish farms or during spawning season, uh, that excessive contact from fish to fish in these overcrowded conditions 
causes larger outbreaks of this um, bacterial infection. And there's higher concentrations of oxygen as well in these overcrowded situations. So you can see here, this is an example of a fish farm. They use raceways to raise these fish. Um, you can see just how crowded that it can, you're not gonna find um, natural populations like this in a river. You're not gonna see this many fish in one area typically. Um, so you can see how easy it would be um, if like this fish had this bacterial infection for it to touch another fish and spread it from fish to fish. If any of y'all have been to the state fair and have gone to the DNR building there, uh, they have like a wall of tank, of fish tanks with different um, wild fish found in Indiana. And you can see like that they have that cotton mouth, those cotton like growths, probably because of the high stress factors from moving from different tanks within a short amount of time, the changing water temperatures and the overcrowding in those tanks. This is a great example of a wild caught salmon um, with this columnaris bacteria. So you can see a small lesion starting um, on its back. And then this is a good example of that saddleback starting to start as well. Um, that pale yellow color, the discoloring. And then here you can see that the bacteria is eating away at those gills. And then this would be an example of the farm caught, uh, farm raised salmon with the same infection. Um, they just have it a little different severity um, with just a small lesion right there and right there. So unfortunately, most of the treatments can only help farm-raised fish. It's hard to pinpoint outbreaks in the wild and contain it to that one spot. So symptoms begin appearing within 24 to 48 hours, and early intervention is key. So um, one treatment is a combination of chloramine T and hydrogen peroxide. They have to be paired together in order um, to fix the situation. If um, if this is happening in your own tank at home or um, on a fish farm, you can lower the water temperature, which would help reduce the spread of this bacteria. Uh, the medicated foods is similar to this combination. Um, that's more of a preventative type of treatment rather than um, an actual treatment in itself. And fish naturally heal well by themselves. That's why you can catch and release fish and they're gonna be fine. Their skin regenerates uh, quickly, so typically their skin will just kind of slough off. Um, so wild fish, as long as they're feeding, they're going to heal, and you know that they're feeding if you can catch them. So even if you're catching fish with this bacterial infection, it's not a bad sign. It shows that they're feeding and that they're going to heal on their own if you do catch um, a fish with this infection. And do you all okay. have any questions? Questions for Kylie. So like on that, the one salmon didn't have very bad lesions. Mm -hmm. Would you eat that one? That one right there. That one, um, since it's raised on a farm, I assume that they're gonna treat it so it should heal completely and so, they can. Okay, so um, it'll come back, it'll go back to healthy, I mean skin, at least they're taking them, I should right. say, scale. And that one's not as bad as the other, right. like oh, the yeah. wild bass that I had shown earlier, probably because these fish um, are more likely to be treated. Questions, comments? Let's give everybody a round of applause for this. Excellent. Very good, very good. Oh, I got two announcements. Listen carefully because they're important. 